We're under the law of Christ. The Antichrist is the Anthropon A Nomon. He is the man of lawlessness. These movements like Elam and things like this are setting people up for the Antichrist. These are Antichrist systems. They're setting people up for the Anthropon A Nomon. Yes, we're under the law. We are under the law of Christ. Let each one remain in the state he was called. Last night I spoke at a Messianic Fellowship in London. Unsaved Jews go there to hear the gospel. People bring them there to hear the gospel. Did Kedush Shabbat. It's important for Jews to see that Jews who believe in Jesus don't stop being Jewish. <laughs> that they keep their culture. As a matter of fact, most Jews who believe in Jesus become more observant than they were before they were saved. But putting one of these on your head does not make somebody any more Jewish or any less Jewish. And it certainly doesn't make someone any more Christian or any less Christian. <laughs> it is purely cultural. That's all. When you make it into something more than that, you got a big problem. In conclusion, turn with me please to Romans chapter 14. Verse 4, who are you to judge the servant of another? To his own master he stands or falls, and stand he will. For the Lord is able to make him stand. One man regards one day above another. Another regards every day alike. Let each man be fully convinced in his own mind. He who observes the day observes it for the Lord. He who eats does so for the Lord. He who gives thanks to God, for he who does not eat for the Lord, he does not eat and gives thanks to God. We are told, do not judge other people for what days they observe. There's a website of some maniac in Aylesbury that attacks me, not because I celebrate Christmas, I don't but because I refuse to condemn people who do. <laughs> and he says on his website, the Lord gave him a dream that I was in a medical surgery with Benny Hinn pulling my hair out and yelling. This confirms I'm a false prophet. <laughs> That's the compliment. I think he ought to check into a psychiatric surgery and have a lobotomy. <laughs> We're told directly not to condemn people. Let them be convinced in their own mind. Now, my family, we have the nativity. We don't have Christmas. This time of year, Jesus celebrated Hanukkah. That's what my family observed. But my family are Israeli. We have the nativity, but not Father Christmas, not Christmas trees are these things. Nonetheless, let's look at Colossians chapter 2. Verse 16, Therefore, let no one act as your judge in regard to food or drink or in respect to a new moon, a festival, or a Sabbath. These things are a shadow of what is to come. They are a shadow. What's the shadow do? Teaches about the hand. The hand is the substance. Once the hand comes, of what consequence is the shadow? 
Be careful of people who are Sabbatarian legalists. We should worship on a Saturday, not a Sunday. This is crazy. Let no one act as your judge in regard to such things. They're only a shadow. Now that the substance has come, it's only a shadow. It's fulfilled in Christ. I don't care if somebody worships on a Saturday or a Sunday or a Tuesday or every day. My family generally keeps both. But if you want to do it Sunday, that's okay with me. But why would you abandon your own culture for somebody else's culture? Unless you're a missionary to that culture. (laughs) There were only four things Gentiles had to do. We've explained the binding and loosing before. I'm terrible with keeping these things organized. Bind loose. Bind loose. It seems in Acts 15 to the Holy Spirit and to us that we do not trouble the Gentiles. There's only four things that were a sort to them. These are juridical terms. Deo. Keep away from idolatry. Keep away from immorality. Keep away from the ritual consumption of blood. Consumption of blood. In other words, the Roman Catholic Eucharist. And keep away from strangulation. Cruelty to animals, but that had a pagan connotation. In, okay? Avoid those things. Those things you are bound to keep. And they're based more on the Noahide law than the Mosaic. But you're free from the rest. You don't need a mezuzah on your door. (laughs) You can eat shrimp if you want to. No problem. If you do, you do. You don't, you don't. But not eating it does not make you any more holy than wearing a keeper. <laughs> and eating it does not make you any less. These things are a shadow. You've got the substance. Be careful of the extreme access of the messianic movement. There is no such thing as a messianic movement. It's multiple movements. There are good strains and there are bad strains. You've got people who are quite solid, who teach the word of God quite accurately. People like Arnold Fruchtenbaum, Michael Rydelnik, Model Ballister. There are good strains of the messianic movement. But you've got lunatics. You have neo-Galatians. You have people who are trying to put people, even Gentiles, into bondage to the law. You have conferences where they're lifting up Jewishness instead of Jesusness. Now there is one last thing that is important. One last thing that is important concerning the law. And our next teaching will we'll show you it. Look at 1 Corinthians again.
Verse 6, your boasting is not good. You not know a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Clean out the old leaven. You may be a new lump, just as you are unleavened. For the Messiah, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Okay. Notice what the apostles do. They again use the shadow to teach about the substance. There is milk and there is meat. Turn with me, please, to Hebrews, written to Jewish believers. Verse 13. Well, let's begin in verse 11. So Hebrews chapter 5. Being designated by God as a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Concerning him we have much to say and it's hard to explain since you become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you have need again for someone to teach you the elementary principles of the oracles of God. You have come to need milk, not meat. Everyone who partakes only of milk is not accustomed to the word of righteousness. He's a babe. But solid food is for the mature, who because of practice have their senses trained to discern good from evil. Okay. First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 1 says the same thing. There is milk and there is meat. I gave you milk to drink, not solid food. You are not able to receive it. In other words... If you only understand the New Testament on its own, you are eating baby food. You are having a diet of milk. A newborn baby needs a continuous diet of milk, that's all. It is incapable of digesting solid food. It would be dangerous for them. But at some point, the baby has to be weaned. Unless you understand the 30% of the, new, the Bible we call the New Testament, in light of the 70%, the Old, you have a steady diet of milk. He says, milk only. Not a problem with milk, but milk only. To have a biblically balanced diet, you need the 70%, which is the Old Testament, plus the 30%, which is the New. When you have people who only are taught the New Testament, and they're not taught how the New fulfills the Old, they are eating baby food. What does Paul do in 1 Corinthians? He uses the Passover, doesn't he? He uses the Feast of Unleavened Bread to teach about sin. Christ, our Passover, has been slain. He uses the symbolism of the Passover to teach about the atonement. Now you can know Jesus died for your sin without knowing about the Passover. But you're never going to understand it in depth unless you understand that he is the Passover. You can take the Lord's Supper and not know anything about the Passover Seder. But you're never going to properly understand the Lord's Supper unless you understand the Seder. You must not practice Jewish rituals, but you must understand them theologically. You understand? We are to understand. You don't have to keep the Jewish holidays, but you have to understand how Jesus fulfilled them. If you don't understand Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, you're not going to properly understand the Atonement of Christ. If you don't understand the Passover you're not going to properly understand salvation. If you don't understand the, 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 the Last Supper as a Seder, you're not going to understand the Lord's Supper. If you don't understand the typology of leaven, you're not going to understand um, the Bible's teaching on sin. If you don't understand Old Testament literary symbolism, you're not going to be able to understand the book of Revelation. You'll have milk, not meat. No, you don't have to keep the law, but you have to understand it doctrinally and theologically. You understand? There's a big difference. There's a big difference. It's a big difference. 
A medical doctor is not a biochemist, but he has to understand biochemistry. <laughs> Otherwise, he can't understand physiology or pharmacology. A dentist doesn't have to be a biochemist, but he has to understand biochemistry, or he can't be a dentist. You don't have to be an observant Jew, but you have to understand Old Testament Judaism. Otherwise, you can't be a mature Christian. That's what Paul teaches. That's what Hebrews teaches. But what does he say to these people? He says, You foolish Galatians, who bewitched you? When you see people trying to put you under bondage to the law, particularly as a Gentile, it is witchcraft. The word in Greek is mesmero. They put the evil eye on you. That's what it means, to put the evil eye on somebody in order to control them. What did Kodesh do in Waco, Texas? He'd stare at them. He'd put the evil eye on them. It's demonic. It's madness. It's the oldest trick in the book. It is nothing short of witchcraft than to try to force people to live under two covenants. You are either under one or the other. You're either under law or grace. You're either saved or you need to get saved. That's it. You can't be a little bit pregnant. You either are or you're not. <laughs> Neither can you be a little bit saved. You either are or you're not. You can't be a little bit under one covenant and a little bit under... The, no, no. You are either under one or under the other. Yes, the shadow still has its purpose. It has its purpose for evangelism. It has its purpose as a teaching tool. It has its purpose culturally. But it has no power of salvation. And it has no power of sanctification. In and of itself, it will not make somebody a better believer. It simply won't. Now, if somebody wishes to do it unto the Lord because that's their culture, they do it unto the Lord, for them it could be. All things are lawful, not all things are helpful. It is perfectly lawful for me to eat shrimp. But I'm an evangelist to Jews, and it's not helpful to my testimony, so I don't do it. I just won't do it. But I'm not going to criticize you. Shrimp is delicious. Bon appetit. <laughs> Bete avon. God created these things to be enjoyed. Go eat the shrimp. <laughs> Nothing wrong with it. Perfectly lawful. Just in my case, it's not helpful. Okay? If I lived in Holy Catholic Ireland where alcohol is such a problem, in England I could go into a pub for lunch. In Ireland, I don't want to go into that pub. I'll tell you why. It's lawful. But in a Celtic culture where you have so much alcohol abuse, it's not helpful. Anything not done in faith is sin. In England, I have the faith to go into a pub. In Ireland, I don't. <laughs> I'd have no problem eating shrimp if I was not an evangelist to Jews. But I don't have the faith to do it. Not because it's wrong. Because it's not helpful to my testimony. It's a matter of personal choice and conscience. Do not let anybody bewitch you. And I'm told here in Nottingham that there are some Christians who are being bewitched. Make no mistake about it. God calls it witchcraft. Have nothing to do with that kind of hyper-messianic legalism. It is not biblical Judaism. It is not biblically messianic Judaism. It is witchcraft. Let's have a break. Bima.